Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the February 23rd, 2018 edition of the Intuit Developer Friday Morning Hangout. I'm your host. I'm actually uh, in London right now. So if you can look behind me, it's actually 5 p.m. in the evening, and there's a double-decker bus out here. If you can barely see it right there. Um, I'm your host, David Leary. I'm the I'm Intuit's Global Small Business Ecosystem Evangelist. You can follow me on Twitter at David Leary. Today we have two guests on the Hangout, um, Peter and Shushma. They are going to do an encore presentation of the presentation they gave at QuickBurst Connect last November. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump into a couple of slides that are just some housekeeping things, and then we'll uh, jump into their presentation. If my click works. There we go. So just a few reminders. Again, for the third year in a row, we are going to do the Small Business App Showdown. Uh, what we do is we take the, uh, all the apps that publish um, by the 5th, 16th of August, and all the apps that publish, we will uh, enter into the contest, and then the top 10 we take to QuickBooks Connect in San Jose. They pitch in front of a panel of judges, and the winner takes home the $100,000. Now, this contest is much more than just winning. Um, just being part of the contest uh, gets promotion for you. Um, after the contest gets promotion for you. So you, so winning's one thing, but just being in the contest and participating and become a finalist is just as equally important as the hundred thousand dollars. So you have 173 days left to enter the contest. So please go to smallbusinessappshowdown.com and make sure your app gets entered. Uh, again, I just mentioned QuickBurst Connect. Start marking your calendars now. November 5th through the 7th in San Jose, California is the great big uh, QuickBurst ecosystem event. So we have small businesses there. We'll have accountants there. We'll have developers there. Um, we'll have uh, uh, resellers there. We'll have celebrities there. It's always a really big event, um, really celebrating small business. And the reason we're in London is next week we have QuickBurst Connect in London. So those of you that are in uh, the UK area, please show up next week to QuickBurst Connect. And then tomorrow we're actually, and that's where I'm physically at, is at CodeNode in, at London. And that's where we're doing our uh, hackathon, Small Biz Hack for uh, London. So those of you who happen to be watching this in the UK region, you could show up tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. We open the doors and the first 25 people here do get a door prize. But um, outside of that, we're going to feed you it's a fun time and you can win 5,000 pounds. So hopefully a lot of you that are watching, we'll see you tomorrow morning. And this event and all events that we do are always can, always can be found on the developer site. It's developer.intuit.com slash hub slash events. So let me switch screens here and stop sharing. And hopefully uh, Peter and Shushma, you guys, uh, we can see your faces. And I'll let you guys uh, introduce yourselves. Welcome this morning. I know it's bright and early on in Pacific for you guys. I think, Peter, you're still muted. Perfect. Thank you, David. Can you hear us now? Perfect, perfect. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Oh. Okay. Um, so let's, let's get started. Thanks, thanks David, for the uh, introduction and um, all the events that you posted for everybody else to join in coming up uh, in the future. But we're here to talk about some of the best practices that you could follow while building an app integration into QuickBooks. Um, I'm uh, Sushma Ratnam, as, as David mentioned. I manage an engineering team here within the Intuit developer group, uh, worked on building strategic integrations in the last year, uh, and right now actually working on all third-party integrations um, and helping kind of build that marketplace and app store for uh, developers like, like you to, you know, market your integration. And I'm joined here by Peter. Hi, everyone. I'm Peter Lavelle. I'm a software engineer on the uh, developer team as well. Um, so I've worked in a lot of different developer roles um, in my six years at Intuit. I started out in developer relations. I went uh, to strategic partnerships. Um, in the past year, I've worked a lot on apps.com and uh, this past six months, I've shifted to developer.intuit.com. So definitely um, spent a lot of time in the developer space and uh, really um, excited to share some learnings with you guys today. Cool. So, um, you know, this is just us. And if you can actually see us on the video, you don't need to see those uh, pictures there. We go right into the agenda. Um, what we want to spend the next 40, 45 minutes here um, talking about is just ground ourselves in, in why customers want QuickBooks integrations, um, what your role as developers are in this uh, ecosystem, 
and why do you have really good uh, practices while building these integrations to make the best out of your time and, and get you that return on investment. Um, and instead of just giving walking through slides, uh, Peter and I are going to kind of role play a little bit here. He's our, my eager um, developer uh, wanting to build a cool integration into QuickBooks and I kind of try to stop his really fast coding pace and, and bring him some good practices that he could follow along the way. So hopefully this will be fun for you guys. Uh, we definitely have fun putting it together and it's uh, interactive between us. So why do customers even want uh, integrations? Um, as you guys know, small business owners are going into their business because they have a passion for doing what they're doing. They're not necessarily going into building a, starting a coffee shop or building a flower shop, you know, trying to sell flowers or selling something on their e-commerce site, um, being a freelance person because they love to do accounting. Um, they love to do what they want to do, but unfortunately in order to run their business, accounting is just a necessary evil. They need to make sure they're compliant with the way they track their transactions. They obviously, like everybody, has, have to pay taxes at the end of the year. If they are growing and they have a bigger team, payroll, you know, trying to expand loans, all of these things are part of running their business. And that's where QuickBooks really comes in to help them, right? QuickBooks helps them keep track of all of these transactions and helps them get some more time to do what they really love to do and what they started their business in. Unfortunately, QuickBooks doesn't handle every single workflow that a small business uh, might need to run their business. So we've seen on average, small business owners use more than QuickBooks to run their business. They have eight or 12 other applications that they use to really make sure their business is running smoothly. Whether it is an app to track their expenses, uh, an app to track all of their customers and their leads, um, an app to track how they do their payments and manage their documents. There's a lot of different apps that are out there that small businesses use and they tend to have to switch between using an Expensify app to figure out my expenses or getting my transactions in PayPal and then switching back to QuickBooks and saying, oh, I need that transaction in QuickBooks because that's where my accounting finally happens. And that's really where they lose sometimes actual money or even time. Um, and time is money for small business owners. Um, and so that's really where developers really help and, and come into this ecosystem of us kind of backing every small business owner um, that's there. So um, we have a platform where you can come in, build your application, um, you know, get all the credentials you need to do API calls. And then we also provide a marketplace um, for you to be able to market your um, integration, you know, apps.com is outside of QuickBooks. We have tabs within QuickBooks itself. So a small business owner that's within QuickBooks can actually find and, and, and connect these apps. So as developers, you have two ways of actually interacting with the small business owner. You obviously, like I said, can publish your app on our app store, uh, but you could also just add a button on whichever website, your own app, build your own website and say, Here's a way to connect to QuickBooks. Um, and you could connect an existing third-party app with QuickBooks, so you could be that system integrator that connects the two. You could own the other app itself and say, hey, connect from my app to QuickBooks. Um, and as developers, you know, you can just start, as David mentioned, developer.intuit.com is a great place to not only get all these events, but also to get information on how to get started as, as a developer. Yeah, so Sushma, th this is great. You know, I really want to hear more about what you have to say about best practices, but I think I might have this figured out. And let me let me tell you why. So okay. I have one of these friends that is really passionate about his small business. Um, he he's an Etsy seller. You know, he loves building his products for Etsy. He gets really excited about each sale he makes. But you know, at the end of the year, he he really has a hard time doing his accounting and getting everything you know straight and all set uh, to pay his taxes. So. I went ahead, you know, I'm a developer. I went ahead and I, I built an app for him that, that I think is awesome, that I think could oh. go right onto your app store today. So I'd love to show it to you real, real quick. And Let me take a look, Peter. Okay. I, I know okay. you're good, but let me just take a look. Okay, cool. So uh, let me just switch over here uh, to my code. 
And for everyone watching, this is, uh, this is live code, so anything could happen, as I always say. So uh, let's go ahead and, and run this. So in this situation, Sushma, I am acting as a system integrator. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to help my friend by syncing over his uh, Etsy transactions into QuickBooks for him through this app. So well, let me just show you how it works. Okay. It's a good idea. You don't want to have to re-enter Etsy transactions exactly. into QuickBooks. So. Yeah. So that's what he was doing. Yeah, again, a lot of trouble with taxes. So uh, let's go ahead and log into my application. You can see I've already met one of your technical requirements, which is to have a sign in with Intuit button. I think the style might be a little out of date, um, and I'll work on updating that. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in with Intuit here. Um, so I just created a sample QuickBooks company here that I'm going to, that I'm going to sign into. <coughs> that's actually just my Intuit account. Okay. So I'm using single sign-on here, and actually what this is doing, my, my application actually does more than just sign the user in. If the user's not yet provisioned on my system, it also, also signs the user up. Okay. So in this case, the user signed up and signed in. Yes. Um, so you can see my app is pretty simple. It's only three steps, really, and then all of your transactions sync over the Isn't that awesome? But there's no third step. No, there's actually, you're right. There's only two, and let's see. So we already signed in. So now we just need to connect um, to Etsy and connect to QuickBooks. So I just did my Etsy connection. Um, so this is another technical requirement that, that I've already met. So I know I could privately publish here with the Connect to QuickBooks button on my site. Um, but so let me just show you how that works. So I click the button. Um, my company here that I set up is a sample company. It's called T Pottery, and I'm just going to connect it to my app, which is called Sync Etsy. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize that connection. So at this point, my application is getting back the token and the realm ID and everything. And look at that. It says that uh, both sides are connected, which is great. I should be good to go. Okay. Um, down here, you can see that my sync is running. I'm going to check on the status. Everything looks good to me. Let's go ahead and take a look at QuickBooks and see what happens. And again, my, my one friend is super excited about this. He thinks it's great. So I think I'm ready for the five stars platform. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take a look here. So what my application does is it creates sales receipts in QuickBooks mm -hmm. for every Etsy sale. Um, so you can see, I just take that total amount that I get from Etsy down here and I stick it into the, the sales category. I have this nice description here that says it's coming from Etsy. So you can see if you go into the sales receipt, you can see it's an Etsy sale. And all the way down here, I did a really cool thing Nice little cool message. Uh, it says Etsy sale to Ching. Something nice for my, for my user to see. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Five stars? Six stars? Yeah. Uh, Peter, I really love the way that you um, did the single sign-on. Um, there were a lot of good things that you, you kind of put in here. The fact that you were able to get up and running, make transactions, and write them into QBO. Those were all, all great, right? Yeah. Um, but there were a few things that, and you can actually go back to your, your, your code book there, a um, few things that, you know, I could say, one, I'm glad you didn't publish this to the App Store right away, just, just okay. saying. Uh, and I'm glad you actually took the Connected Cookbooks route to, to try this out. So okay. first of all, good step. Okay. And I'm not sure that this is going to be the highest quality integration for you to get your five plus stars. Yeah, but just two like. steps. No? Okay. okay, can you tell me more? So, first of all, I'm not sure you, I felt like you really jumped quickly into your idea. Yeah. And so one of the things I wanted to kind of go back is, why should you even care about thinking a little bit more before you go create your, your integration, okay? okay. So, first, let's go back to how many customers you have on QuickBooks. You talked to one, we have 2.5 plus million customers. That's a lot more. Okay. You could be reaching out to all of them versus your one friend, right? And if you want to do that, then you want to provide really good benefit to all of them. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you want your five stars. So you want to get customers, potentially all of these two million customers, to be able to say, yes, this app is, is a great app. Mm -hmm. And so instead of jumping into it, my first thing to you would be, take a little bit of time, right, to figure out what you get on your return of investment and follow some, you know, better practices. Um, reviews matter. Like, you, you as a developer want a five-star review, but beyond that, 
it's your customers who are looking at your integrations that are going to look at that review and say, is this worth my time to go and integrate this app? Um, and so making sure that it's not just one customer that's giving you a five-star review, but everybody over time continuing to keep that quality bar up is important because even the one or two or three one-star reviews is really going to bring your application back. Okay. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. And if you had published your app on the App Store, you might end up seeing something like this. Why would anyone use your app? Ouch. Yeah, yeah. that would be that would be awful. Awful, you know, that right? That really hurt me too. So, um, yeah, what can I do to make it better? Glad, glad you asked, Peter. And that's why I said, good thing you didn't publish because these okay. things hurt. You know, reviews hurt, and I'm glad you asked about what you, what could you do better, yeah. right? First, I want to go back to that point I was making about jumping in really quickly. Okay. You talked to a, a, a friend who had a problem, and that was great. You know, you, you noticed that there was a problem, and you said, I'm going to do something to fix this problem. But at Intuit, uh, there's something that we follow even internally called Design for Delight. And there are three things that go into that Design for Delight philosophy. And it's really helped Intuit, and, and I think it will help a lot of developers to actually kind of talk to more customers, build up that customer empathy, because you know everybody's a little different. You talk to a, your friend who's a small business owner using Etsy, you talk to other people, they might have different workflows. So really building up and putting yourself in the place of your customer is really important to understand their problems. And think of a lot of different ideas that you could, you could use to solve that problem. It's what we call kind of go broad to, to go narrow, which is, in, in some ways an oxymoron in, in, in the statement itself, but what it means is you come up with a lot of different ideas, you understand the problem, you fall in love with the problem, but not necessarily one solution that you have. So. I, I think that's kind of, I, I started out narrow. Yeah, and you said, oh, here's a solution, I'm, I'm gonna go implement it. And there can be a lot of different solutions out there, and so you kind of have to look at all of them, and then actually do an, a, a minimum viable product, an MVP, and, and, and solve one big problem um, and I love the fact that you asked me what this looks like it's the first step of, of rapid experimentation with your customers with your stakeholders with with people who've had more experience building integrations all of these are, are good people to run your ideas by and uh, you are actually serving two sets of customers here you have your small business owners you also have your accountants so your friend might be using an accountant to help him with some of the finances because he may not really care about it and accountants have really good insights on how your data integration should work so that they could make you know their accounting with their small business a lot easier right. um, and so I just want to kind of also come back to your integration right so once you go off validate your ideas and features just to give you something a little bit more meaty, given that you asked me for, for input, um, you brought all of your transactions into one sales receipt. And that was like, you're making a sale. Yeah. But what about refunds? Like, what if, I ret what if your customer returns something? I'm not sure you really took care of that. I didn't, um, I didn't see you bring in customer information or shipping information. And it's like taxes are really based on that address and so if you want to do proper tax calculation you need to do that so one of the things that you need to understand is that accounting is complicated and you are taking that responsibility of making sure that the data in QuickBooks is accurate for your customer and so while it's really tempting to as a developer say yeah I got this API running I can create a sales receipt I'm gonna do it you want to think of the data behind that transactions that you're pulling from from the source and think about do I need customer information do I not do I are there expenses associated with the sales uh, item uh, how do I handle taxes and you know when there is a bank transaction coming in and an Etsy transaction coming in how can I reconcile those and so the first step or, or first piece of input I'd give you Peter uh, based on your integration that you showed me is I think you should take a little bit more time, talk to people and figure out how to get that transaction accuracy correct, because okay. that's really important. And take the time, don't take shortcuts. Okay, yeah. Uh, so thank you, Susan, that, that was great advice. I've been, I've been typing away over here and I think I have another version of my app that I can show you that will hopefully address a lot of uh, what you've been um, 
what you've been presenting. So let's switch back over here to our code. <coughs> And um, let's just refresh QuickBooks and make sure that everything's back how it was. Cool, so you can see I have no sales right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and switch to my new code that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna shut down the one I was just running. Let's just switch branches here. All right, cool. So I think you're, you're going to be much happier with this. Um, Can't wait to see. But let, me, let me tell you a little bit about, I, about what I did. Mm -hmm. So I, I did go out and I, I talked to more people, like you said. Nice. Um, I talked to some other um, Etsy sellers as well, and it turns out they don't exactly sell the exact same way that my friend does. Mm -hmm. right? So I got, a lot, I got a lot of other feedback from them. Um, and then I went and I talked to an account, so I said, hey, how should I actually be writing this data into QuickBooks? Because to be honest, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so I did sit down with a comment, and that was really, really helpful. That's good. Um, so let me show you now what it, what it looks like. Um, so it's still, you know, still a two-step process, which, which I think is amazing. You know, I'm, I'm already logged in. If you go here, and I'm, like, I'm already connected, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click and start my sync again. So everything in my app has stayed the same. I've made a lot of changes behind the scenes, which I will... Um, I'm going to have to switch over to QuickBooks now to show you. All right, cool. So we have, we have some sales receipts coming in now. So you can see that um, I've actually started to sync over the customer information, um, which I got feedback that you know, a lot of my Etsy sellers want to retain that customer information so they can use it later in their CRM system and things like that. So I'm now syncing over that information. I have a, a payment method, which is now Etsy, so I can clearly distinguish if someone's paying me through Etsy or paying, um, paying my small business owner through different units. I can sync those over. Um, I have the reference number here for the Etsy transaction, so if my small, small business owner needs to reference back, um, it's right here in the sales receipt itself. Um, and you can see here what I've really done now is I've, I've split out that total amount into actually the, the components that it um, consists of. So I have the actual sale for this boutique platter, which was only 224. But shipping was actually more expensive than the item itself. So I've broken off shipping into a separate line item here, which is $5. And then um, sales tax, again, um, before I was just kind of bundling that all into the same item. Now, after what you said, I realized I need to separate that out. The really, accountant would be happy about yes, that. Yes, yeah, they come up that the most. So I have the sales tax broken out. And now I even have a link. Instead of my nice to ching message, I have a link to the actual um, uh, Etsy transaction that you can actually go um, and look at and make sure it matches up. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I want to show you now, if we refresh this, is that I am also bringing over uh, refunds. So, yeah, it turns out um, people refund, uh, people ask for refunds. It's really important to get that information to QuickBooks, and I'm syncing that over as well. Actually. So, great advice. Um, what do you think? Am I ready to go to the App Store now? Five star yet? Um, you know what? I think that there was a lot of improvement that you did. I think you took my advice about you know accuracy yeah. uh, to heart. Um, I love the fact that you got the shipping costs in, and if you, you know if you think that oh I got shipping costs in, but as a small business owner, I'm looking at it and going, and you just mentioned Man, five bucks for shipping. Like, do yeah. I want to ship to this Matt Damon guy? Like, I don't know, right? Yeah. Or would he be willing to be paying me that much shipping cost for a $2 product? Yeah. So those are great insights that I can get because you've broken out stuff. Right. Um, love the, the link back to Etsy. People always, accountants especially, like to go back and double check and triple check their numbers and make sure they're doing it right. And yeah. having that convenient way to go back and forth is also um, really good steps. Um, and as we're going through this journey, if you're saying, hey, I'm going to write, publish this right now, you might be surprised to now get something like this. It's not easy to use, and there's a lot of sync issues. And I'm sure, Peter, you're going to say, like, what? I, I took care of all of these things you told me. I took care of refunds. I took care of sales, tax, expense, all of these things. So why is somebody saying there are some yeah, issues? I thought I was done. So a lot of developers do think like they're done, yeah. um, and then they end up seeing reviews like this. And, and one of the things that we need to understand as developers is that there is no one-size-fits-all kind of app. 
And so I know you talk to a bunch of customers and you talk to an accountant, but then every small business is a little unique. So some Etsy owners want to keep track of their customers, but let's say there is somebody who's on Etsy selling, you know, a hundred or 200 products a day. They don't want their customer a database in, in QuickBooks to be populated with all of that customer oh, information. Okay. You know, it's like, it might be a very exclusive item and you have exclusive customers, um, then it's good to know who they are and, and kind of have that information. But sometimes that just overwhelms the system. They're like, okay, this is a whole bunch of junk. It's in too terms much of information. Too okay. much information. And you said you weren't familiar with accounting. They're not familiar with accounting. You're a small business owner, yeah. right? Um, and so being able to tell them what's going to happen with your sync is, is important. You had your two steps and sync was running, but I didn't know, are you going to actually split out my sales and are you going to bring my customer information in? And once I do run it, I'm going, I didn't want customer information in. He's bringing in customer information and I think the sync has issues because it doesn't meet what I expect it to meet. So basically tell them, so summarize their, give them choices, first of all, because one size doesn't fit all. Do you want customer? Do you not want customer? And once you give them that choice, if you can summarize what their um, choices are, then it gives them a little bit more. Here's, I understand what's going to happen and therefore I will be expecting it. And I will say, yes, it's doing what I expect. Okay. So it's more of an expectation versus, you know, actuality that trips people off sometimes. Um, and I, I mentioned here, provide a preview of the transactions that come in if possible. Uh, you're probably using our current V3 APIs that are available out there. Um, if you've heard other Hangout sessions or you know you go to QuickBooks Connect uh, in, in London, you'll hear about stage transactions. Um, it's something that we're building here at Intuit to really help make the developers' lives a lot easier when they're building in data in integration. So watch out for that. Um, and what stage transactions do is help as a developer, you don't have to write directly to books, to the QuickBooks, you can write into a, what we call a staging area, and then we will provide the UI for you to actually review that transaction, as in the customer, small business, connects your app and is able to review the transactions before they come to awesome. QuickBooks. So I think that's a great um, step that we're doing to help you guys help small businesses and, and accountants get, get better. So great, great work so far. Um, just think of different people and add some flexibility, um, I guess, in your app, and that would take it okay. to the next step. Okay. Well, th that's again great advice. And again, I've been I've been coding over here, um, so let me switch back again. Um, to Looks like Peter and Shusma dropped. I'm trying to figure that out. If you guys could stay tuned for a moment. Let me try to get a hold of them here on Slack. Hopefully they did not lose all connectivity. So if you did re, uh, those of you watching on YouTube, on YouTube, we'll try to clip this out after the fact. But if not, um, anybody who's watching live on Facebook Live, just stay tuned for a moment. I'll try to recover this here. I'm just going to pause the recording for a moment.
Uh, unless we got you back. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, it took me a second to realize for sure you guys were gone. I was like, wait a second, this is not really happening or it is happening. But I think we're back. I do apologize to anybody who's watching live on Facebook. Uh, we did lose the feed, but uh, we're back. All right, David, uh, can, you, can you tell us where we dropped, if you don't mind? Oh, um, I think you were just about to show your third demo. Okay. Cool. You're, you're late, like, you just covered like all the extra improvements you were going you need to make. And you just talked about stage transactions, and then I think you're ready to start flipping over. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Apologize again. Sorry. Okay, cool. So let's switch over to the demo again. Um, so uh, as I was explaining to Susan before we dropped off, um, I actually, so it's no longer an easy, you know, two or three step process now. Um, my customers love it even more. So what, what I've done is I've given them the ability to First control when the sync is running. So the sync does not kick off right away. And the reason for that is I've provided uh, users the ability to really um, have settings for their uh, integration. Uh, so like you were saying, Sushma, users don't want all their customers synced over all the time. They don't want all their items synced over necessarily all the time. And they want a lot of flexibility. And I, this is feedback I got from the comments as well. They want a, a lot of flexibility about the, the actual accounts um, from the chart of accounts that these um, transactions close to QuickBooks. Mm. And I really need a lot of help from accounts understanding where That's those great. should go and um, what these options should be. So let's um, let's quickly just jump into this now. So I'm going to change. I also like that you have the number of days of, of loading. You know, you can choose between 30 or 60. Yeah. That's a good one. But sometimes people already have transactions in and they don't want That's true. And I was, I was, yeah, exactly. I was getting feedback that I was syncing some duplicates. So Let's go ahead and try this with it without syncing the customer information now. Um, so I saved my settings. Now if we go over to status, again, uh, working on the UI a little bit here, but the user at least has control over when the sync runs at this point. Um, so if we quickly now switch back over to QuickBooks. Just show you real quick here. Um, so now, as you can see, I changed the setting to say I, I do not want all my customer information to sync over from Etsy into QuickBooks. And with that quick, quick uh, settings change, you can see that now we're requesting QuickBooks and my customers are locked up. Uh, so what do you think? Five stars now, is that, is that all, I had, all I had to do? You know, you, you, you did a lot uh, in terms of um, adding that configurability. That, that, that really, really helps. Um, and so you would probably end up with it's working great, right? Yeah, awesome. you, you've got your transactions in, you've taken care yeah. of the um, accuracy of your transactions, you're letting them choose a few things and how they'd like it. But then they're like, I think so. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. <clears throat> and so what happens is as soon as they integrate, they're checking their transactions and they're like, yeah, this looks all good. And then suddenly maybe down the road, they don't see any more Etsy transactions. And they're like, is my sync running? Is it not running? Uh, did I just not make sales last week? Um, how often is it going to run? <clears throat> oh, okay. Am I going to get my transactions today because I need to go see my accountant for X, Y, Z reasons? They just don't know what's going on. Oh, that seems frustrating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you get it, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, I, I've done my stuff really well, but it's just that you're not giving them a lot of insight into mm -hmm. what's going on and just a little bit more control. You allowed them to decide when they want to start the sync, but you didn't kind of add any scheduling in there. You don't know whether it's actually running right now. When was the last time it ran? Um, were there any errors? Did you have transactions in Etsy that for some reason you couldn't write into QuickBooks? I just don't know. Or maybe there were no transactions in Etsy, right? And so it's just giving them that control on how to manage their, their sync. Um, as well as giving them some status information. You've already done kind of single sign-on. Um, and so if you actually built in a page in your integration, instead of saying sit back, relax, or hey, sync is just yeah. running, to tell them exactly what happened. Okay. And we have, if you publish to our app store, a place where you can actually say, here's my launch link or my settings link. And for users who click on that, you could direct them directly into the status page, which gives them a lot of information on how this app is actually doing. What is this app doing for me kind of lately, right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and so just 
provide those insights, allow them to change the sync settings. And once you're ready to publish, allow them to get to that settings page really easily from both end folks. Great. Okay. Thank you. Small uh, tip. Yeah. So I've been again coding away over here. So let's let's again switch back. Um, and we'll, sorry, let me just open QuickBooks here. All right. So again, you can see there we're starting here with the starting with a blank slate. So let's just so while that's happening, I can, I can just show you here what I what I've done, which I think you'll think is really cool. And my, my customers on this too, so just like you were saying, Sushma, mm -hmm. they really love, love to be able to see what's actually happening. Um, and not, you know, it really helps me too, because I was getting a lot of calls from customers um, saying that they were missing transactions, and then I really have to go into my logs, and it was, it was taking me a lot of time really just to figure out what was happening. And really, that's what they need to. So it saved, yeah. it, it would make them happy, and it would save me a lot of time. That's, that's, an, that's a, a good kind of two-way win there, right? You're helping the customer kind of figure out everything on their own and put the demo gods into it. Let's just clean start here. And as Peter's uh, kind of uh, restarting stuff, um, for the audience to remember that, you know, um, the customers really like to be in control of what's going on. They want to be on top of uh, how things are working and making sure that at all times they understand um, what, what's going on. All right. So sorry about that. I, I got it running again here now. Uh, you can see that I have... Um, so once the user goes and configures mm -hmm. their sync, like you saw before, they can right. choose all their accounts. So then they land on this page where they, ha they can actually see the status they're looking at. Um, so you can see that I have my last sync, so it's not completed yet, it's actually running right now. Mm -hmm. I have my next sync, um, which tells them the next time the sync will occur. Yeah, so nice. with that, that's the transactions I'm doing you know, once at night, every, every time, but I tell them when that will happen. Um, I give them control over pausing and starting the sync. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really cool. And then I'm having, I'm having some issues right now, um, unfortunately. But even if I look at this, this screen right here, um, you kind of um, show the transactions that actually would have come in on that screen. And I think that that's a, a great yeah. screen to kind of link your users to. And, and you also have this result column, right? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so it really helps users reconcile. So they can see the date of this uh, exit transaction here. They can see the type of transaction, whether it's a sale or refund, um, the order number of the exit transaction, the results. So whether it's didn't click the ticket set or it failed, and then then a link to the actual transaction. Yeah, and I like the fact that you have a link here that will take you back right into QuickBooks. Um, and so you have this kind of two-way linking. Like I said, yeah. people like to go check and double check their numbers, and so. You know, you can go from QuickBooks in the memo field into Etsy. Now, from your Etsy dashboard, you're able to go into, into QuickBooks. Yeah. So I think that two-way uh, sync, if you add, is, uh, is great. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so what do you think? How am I doing? Um, I think that you are almost on, on target. But you're an engineer, and you just saw what happened. Yes. Things sometimes don't quite go um, the way you planned it, planned it to go. Um, we have... Three systems here that are working together, right? You had QuickBooks that you had to kind of read from. You have Etsy that you're reading from. Sorry, QuickBooks you're writing to. Etsy you're reading from. And then you have your own integration that needs to be kind of up and, and, and running all the time. And so as much as we all as engineers try to keep our uptime to 99.95% or higher, even at QuickBooks, that's what we really strive to do, that it still is downtime that could happen, like we just saw, at the most inconvenient moment, yes. right? Or like, ah, this isn't when I wanted this to fail. But um, what you want to do is, in your system, take into account some of that resiliency, right? Um, make sure that if it fails, you just don't drop the transactions, you try again, your, your next sync picks up those transactions that may not have come in from yesterday. Okay. Um, 
you keep track of what you've synced, what you've not synced. And, and sometimes you'll notice that you've got data from Etsy that doesn't quite match some of the validations that QuickBooks needs. Um, whether it's, hey, my memo field was longer than what QuickBooks allowed it to be. And so what do you do there, right? You could just drop that transaction on the floor or keep it and say, hey, here was an error. Um, you could keep your transactions of QuickBooks is just down, try it again. So in really short, errors happen, make sure you handle them grace gracefully and you know, let the user know that, hey, you know, something just didn't go right, well, we'll try again. Cool. Yeah, so um, let's switch over one more time. Let's see if the demo works this time. I, I, again, I've been coding away. Uh, I don't know if my code will compile right now, but let's, let's give it a chance. Uh, and we can quickly switch back. I can explain what I did. So no, no changes from last time. So the user still has all that inside and control, which is really great. So all I've done is, is change kind of what happens in the, the back end. The back end back this yeah. So the, the user, my goal with this is the user should really never know that anything happened. So if a failure occurs, whether I call Etsy's APIs or if I call QuickBooks APIs, if a failure occurs and I can recover from that failure, I want to do it so that the user never knows that there's not at all. Yeah. And they wake up in the morning, it's just everything's beautiful, all the transactions are the same. So um, let's just quickly see how the integration is doing. So it's still getting, still getting some errors. Let's go ahead and disconnect. And maybe we can just take a minute and we'll reconnect. And while you're doing that, Peter, just to interrupt for a moment, anybody that's uh, attending live in the Hangout or in the Zoom, please uh, use the Q&A panel to ask any questions. Those of you that are on Facebook, you can use the comments and I will uh, get those answered live on the air. Um, one of the people were asking about stage transactions, if you could get, if there's more details on that. So I did provide the link. Last week's uh, Hangout, we actually had Tony on and Tony talked about stage transactions. Um, about half his presentations was, was about stage transactions. So I provided the link for that. And then also we have the early access link as well. So if you want to start uh, apply to participate in some of the early testing and early access we have in some of the V4 APIs, uh, please follow up that link. So I did paste both those in. Cool, thank you, David. Um, so just to show everybody, so this is um, from the previous demo, this is what the inside control should have looked like if it ran. Um, so you can see the user can see all the data that's syncing over. But I just want to quickly switch over now. So like I said, everything I did was kind of behind the scenes. So I actually have to show you some of the logs okay. to show you what happened. Yeah, and, and, and remember that as you're building a great integration, it doesn't always have to be customer facing. Yes, yes, and this, this one is all, all just, you know, resiliency behind the scenes. So um, this is just my log. So you can see that I, I tried to write this, um, I was attempting to write a refund here to QuickBooks um, at about 9.44. So um, that actually resulted in a 503. So something was happening with QuickBooks, the, the service was having intermittent issues and I got 503 back to the service. So what I did is I actually waited a couple of seconds as you can see here. And I said, so I want to give the system a little bit of time. I don't want to make that call right away back again because I'll probably get another 503. So I backed off for a couple of seconds. I tried again. I got another 503, but I did not give up. So I said, okay, service is still down. Uh, something's happening. So I waited even longer. Um, and I tried it again, as you can see here. Um, so I tried it then um, a few seconds few later. Seconds later yeah. You can see here, about five seconds later, four or five. And it works. So at that point, you know, just by you know having some retries and having some backup mechanisms to give the service a chance to recover, I was actually able to successfully write this refund into QuickBooks. And again, this is all behind the scenes. The customer has no idea that any of this happened, and they just wake up and they're refund. Yeah, and QuickBooks. if you go back to your status page, um, I think it clearly shows that if I came in and I and I looked at this, I can say, yeah, yes. my sales came in, my refund came in. I don't ever know that there was a glitch behind yeah. the scenes, and that's yeah. that's really important. You know, if you even go back to accuracy and consistency and making sure you're taking that responsibility really seriously about um, getting the the results in. And I'm hoping that if let's say even third time wasn't the charm, 
at some point you would stop retrying and say, well, this refund was there and it was not successful. There was a failure. And, yeah. you know, that gives the user a chance to go back and say, huh, what, what went wrong? And, you know, if you could give some details about that mm -hmm. failure, that would make this, you know, a lot more compelling. Yeah. Yeah, they, they just love being able to see that there was a failure and in which transaction failed. So even if they have to go manually create that, they, they have the option. And they and, have the information. And they have the information. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so thank you. So what do you think? What are your impressions of my app? Let me show you a review that you might see on, on, on your app um, that might kind of tell the story. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I think oh, cool. integrations okay. like this are rigid. They're not flexible, but there, you gave them that wow yeah. factor, right? Like I didn't quite expect this to happen. Um, you obviously tracked all the work that they were doing, the work that your integration was doing. They were informed at all times. And, and back to our first point, you've got all the right information that they needed uh, fully into QuickBooks. So if we go back to all of our steps, right? We got the right information in, we made it flexible, we made it easy to, to track, and, and over time, it, it continued to work. And so they were like, wow, this, yeah. this actually does it. So Peter, I think at this point, you, you've kind of nailed it. Yeah, this is, this is a awesome. great review you. Uh, for you to get yeah. uh, on your, on your uh, app. But one small tip as developers that you guys need to know, getting great reviews isn't the easiest of tasks. We've been building strategic integrations ourselves and it's hard. When people find something upsetting, they will take the time to come into your portal and say, this thing didn't do what I expected it to do. Um, getting a review like this is sometimes not the easiest to solicit. So as developers, once you do publish your app on your app store, do reach out to people. You know people who are using your integration, see if they like it. Um, and encourage them to to give you uh, reviews and occasionally you will get something that you know you don't like but if you sign up to get notified of these new uh, reviews you can actually address them you can say hey thanks for that feedback I'm going to change stuff and you know if you can actually comment on the review okay. yourself and so the next person who comes along says oh I see a review that's not so positive but the developer has taken the time and effort to respond and actually make it better. That's great advice. Okay. Yeah, so either ways, get the reviews from your customers. That's the best way to get feedback and, and kind of get your integration to be even better, right, awesome. for okay. what it is. Yeah. Um, and, and one last thing I wanna leave you with is that we've recently introduced the apps tab on the accountant um, workspace. So cool. you have QuickBooks uh, online that the small businesses use. We have QuickBooks for accountants that the accountants use. And we have um, actually enabled accountants to not only integrate uh, apps within to their own form, their own accounting form, but also on behalf of their clients. Awesome. So, so they could do that for me today. They could yeah. That. Awesome. Yeah. And so basically now we've expanded, you know, if you get one accountant connecting to 10 of their clients, that's just a 10 X factor of, you know, people yeah. using your um, integration. So accountants really are your best friends here. Uh, in terms of getting a lot more usage of your app. Um, but one of the things that you want to be a little careful about is SSO. Um, you know, we tend to think with SSO, we've got the user context, and, and if it's the same user coming back, we will automatically log in. Yeah. Now the accountant is the same user, but I might have two different clients. And so when I'm coming to your system, I could be saying, hey, connect on behalf of Peter, who's one of my clients, or connect on behalf of David, who's another client. And so now as, as the receiving application, you not only need to know of, of Sushma as the accountant, but it's Sushma connecting to David's company or Sushma connecting to Peter's company. And so you wanna keep track of both the user as well as the client and the, and the company that the connection is being made for. And sometimes as developers, we just think of SSO as user-based, but given complexity between accountants, clients, and multiple companies, um, you wanna make sure that you're, you're connecting to the right set of books. Mm -hmm. So that's just one thing that you wanna know. There is a, a blog post out there, if you can, you know, if you go back and look at these slides that you can read about to get a lot more information um, on how to make your uh, app accountant ready. Uh, because if it isn't, then you get this little blue warning that says you can't install this for your client, you can install it for yourself. 
um, but you can't. And we're keeping track of some of the apps that people want. Um, and so if we find that there's a lot of apps that people are asking for and, and this isn't accountant ready, we will circle back, back to you. Um, so just make sure you're accountant ready for your app. And, and David, let me know how I'm doing on time. We're, we're getting close. We're getting okay. close. So. Okay. So um, just to wrap it up, once you've got the, uh, the great integration going, um, you want to market your integration. So we have, like I said, the app store and app card where you can give your information in. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. You're putting the right images or the right information to sell your integration. We have a new kind of app card format that you can use. Um, talking about how your integration works with QuickBooks is important. So like for your Etsy app, if you say, hey, I'm bringing in sales receipt, I'm bringing in refunds, I'm, this is the XYZ transactions that I'm going to bring into QuickBooks, it makes it a lot easier for people to understand. And, and lastly, you're selling your application on our store. Um, get creative with pricing. It's always a hard uh, job to figure out the right price for what you're offering. Uh, but sometimes premiums work or functionality based pricing or you know like in this example here it's just volume based like if i uh, get x number of x transactions the price is you know something and, and more than x is, is something else. so we have a flexible pricing model that you could put in there you obviously take care of, of pricing and, and the purchasing so feel free to be flexible around there and just just to wrap up uh engineering is one thing nail the customer problem, nail the engineering excellency, and lastly, market your product well. Um, and I think if you get those three key things done, um, you'll be in, in, in great shape. And so just to, to wrap up, uh, and I'll just go through these quickly, um, just to give you a refresher, validate your ideas with your customers as your starting point. Um, make sure that you are taking all of the accounting into, uh, into consideration as you're building your app, talk to the right accountants, um, one size doesn't fit all. Give some flexibility, some options, and guide the user. Um, think of long term. Make sure that the user is consistently aware of how your app is working, and you know how they can change stuff, uh, and give them that you know ability to see where their integrations are at, at at all times. Um, errors can happen. Make sure that you don't drop things on the floor. Um, like we just talked about accountant ready and lastly, uh, make sure you have a really good compelling app card once you decide to, to publish. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, so that's kind of, I know I, I breezed through the last bit a little bit, but um, that's kind of what we had to share with you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We had fun, yeah, Peter you, and I presenting. No, thank you both of you. This is actually a really good presentation. What I like about it is the, uh, the build. Right, like it's it's really the thought process of like you're kind of a bad integration and you've kind of made it great. So as you go through that, those iterations, right? It was like six or seven, correct? And obviously in between, you learn from customers, you listen to customers, you did you, like that those steps. But does it matter the order? Like, would it be okay to build a good airlock first and make sure I have any errors first? Like, does it matter what order you kind of attack this in, or is it kind of the order you laid out here? But I think it, it, it is really important to go and talk to your customers and accountants first to really understand, you know, how they will use your app. Um, I'd, say, I'd say the order doesn't matter, though. It's, it's really important to really start out by talking to customers. But also, you want to build that resiliency and logging and everything into your app, you know, just from the get-go, right? You want to have that fundamentally in your app so you can always... Uh, see what's happening with your customers and really debug your application as you yeah, go. So you could have had that first integration where you, Peter was just bringing in the sales receipt and build resiliency into that, right? Yeah. That, that's fine. Yeah, and you want to go and show that to your customers and get feedback. So like Dave, like you're saying, you want to kind of do all these in parallel uh, okay. to all the great integration. And if I've already built an app out of, out of an apps.com, I could almost use this as a template. Like I could watch this video, hit pause. Okay, does my app handle this stuff? oh no, fix that and then go back and use it. Cause it's really like, I feel like this is like a checklist almost, right? Like, hey, make sure you do this, make sure it goes this deep, make sure you do this. I think it's really well, well laid out. So hopefully a lot of people find this uh, valuable and watch it and pause it a lot on YouTube after the fact. I think we're about to kick kicked out here. We actually officially have to wrap up. Uh, thank you both of you for uh, doing this. Um, anybody who wants to watch us after the fact, you can find these videos. They're always on YouTube and now they're always on our uh, Intuit Developer Facebook page as well. All right, have a good day. See everybody next week.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.